Hi, and thank you for tuning in to the Faith Based Workplace Show. I am your host, Nina Stiles. And here's where we focus on topics to help you develop and live a spirit-led life as a Christian in today's workplace. So welcome to episode six. And this episode's topic is God is restructuring you through your work. Many of us have been so conditioned to stand firm and following our own will that there's very little opportunity for change. So much so that This outlook can cause a person to become callous, where they've developed a natural tendency to say, well, that's just how I am and there's no changing me. So unfortunately, this mindset can become so impenetrable over the years that it's impossible for the person to see things from another perspective. And that may be okay for some, but if you're hoping and praying for increase in favor in your career, well, then this would be an issue. So in this episode, we'll uncover what it looks like when God is restructuring you through your work. So let's get into it. You know, it's not uncommon for any of us to hold tightly to our perspectives, especially when uh, our perspectives or our mindset has in some way, shape, or form been the very thing that has helped us achieve certain things in life. So whether those achievements are formal education, career, whatever those accomplishments may be, you've developed a firmness towards your mindset or keeping this mindset because basically it it hasn't failed you. But now you're at a place where you find yourself setting your eyes on greater heights. So now that you've set your eyes and your sight on greater levels or higher levels, this may bring you to a place where you're now praying for next level increase or favor or even direction on how to reach this next level or new level that you're striving for. And so with that, well, now God has to do some restructuring in you in order for you to receive that blessing. The problem with restructuring is this, as I mentioned, we hold tightly to our current point of view or our mindset. So the restructuring will be uncomfortable or uh, downright emotionally painful because the process is difficult. And the difficult part about it is that you have to not only let go of your ways and your will but you're also faced with uncovering things about yourself that you may not have realized were there before. So some of those things that end up being revealed or discovered are four common areas, which is self-willed behavior, complacency, conservativeness, and then ideology. So I'm going to peel back the layers of each one so that you will not only see how they will hinder you, from getting to your next level, but different ways God will disassemble you away from these things and then restructure you the way only he can. So self-willed behavior is basically as it sounds, where we've developed this mindset, which is as long as I make sure that things go according to my will, then the chances of me seeing my desired outcome are more likely to occur. The problem with this is this, you can grip so tightly onto your circumstances that you leave little room for God to wow you. And so you're performing at a rate that's exhausting psychologically and emotionally, hoping to reach the outcome that you have in mind. And then the extended problem to this is you end up missing out on the richness that God has prepared for you to experience. You see, there's an organic flow that only God can produce. And when we interrupt or disrupt the flow by inserting our hands to add our limited capabilities, well, then we have the potential to only reach the expected outcome we wanted 
rather than receive an amazing outcome God stored up for you that far exceeds your expectations. And then we have to get into a place of understanding that our specific outcome isn't always what's best. So if we're working on living a life that resembles Jesus, then our will or the way that we go about following through with our plans isn't always what's best. And a perfect example of this was Jesus's prayer in Gethsemane right before his crucifixion found in Matthew 26, 39, which states, he went on a little further and bowed his face to the ground, praying, my father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. You know, I think at times we may lose sight of the bigger picture as it relates to what God is doing and how he wants things to be done. So we have to remember it's his will that's most important, not ours. And with that, we're surrounded by others, loved ones and neighbors. So God can be in the process of allowing his blessings to fall on you and specific people around you. Another way God will disassemble you or rearrange you internally uh, through self-willed behavior is if there's a struggle with giving. You know, you may have been a giving person at one point, and now you've refrained from doing so because of past disappointments. And so God will position you to exercise that generosity muscle while you are gaining and developing a mindset of abundance. And keep in mind, generosity may not necessarily come in the form of monetary value. It can come in the form of just spending quality time, whether if it's volunteering or helping someone out, family or friends. Um, And I know that There are many people who have previously given their time and may have experienced some disappointment because there was a conflict of some sort, uh, personality clashes that takes place. Or maybe you just felt as though you weren't seen or valued. Um, I know that God will allow you to re-experience that journey so that he can heal you through his grace, love, and compassion for you. So now when we look at complacency, you have fallen to a place where you're content with your own process of doing things. And you're content with your own process of doing things because it's always worked for you. So it's so easy for you to develop this uh, natural reflex to look back at your previous accomplishments and figure well, since I've accomplished those things, then I will continue with my my norm. But the issue here is when you're referencing what you've always done in the past to accomplish something, you run the risk of not following God's process for you to reach new heights. And a perfect scripture to keep near whenever this type of scenario comes about is Psalm 18 verses 30 through 33 which states, God's way is perfect. All the Lord's promises prove true. He is a shield for all who look to him for protection. For who is God except the Lord? Who but our God is a solid rock. God arms me with strength and he makes my way perfect. He makes me as sure-footed as a deer, enabling me to stand on mountain heights. And then another scripture that tells us, or lets us know how God will make adjustments for us on our path and help secure our walk towards progress is Psalm 1836, which states, you have made a wide path for my feet to keep them from slipping. Now, when we take a look at conservativeness, this typically causes those who may have experienced disappointment in the past to just stay reserved. So rather than exploring opportunities and taking risk or chances, they believe it's just safer to stay put. No sense in rocking the boat. The problem with this is that if greater opportunities aren't presented without you taking the initiative, then you lose out on discovering additional things 
that end up being well beyond what you originally targeted as far as accomplishing or trying to accomplish. So not only will you miss out on new discoveries about yourself, but God may reveal new things to you that you would have never considered. And then finally, ideology, which happens quite often when you have your eyes set on greater things and you have mentally choreographed the exact or ideal steps you believe must take place in order for you to feel secure with the outcome. Now, the issue here is more than likely obvious because it's a setup for disappointment when things don't go the ideal way you envisioned. So rather than making the decision to hold on and watch what God does on your behalf, you throw your hands up at the situation because the steps didn't play out in the order you had in mind. I mean, this this is similar to self-willed behavior, but unlike continuing to try to will things in your favor, you make the decision to kind of throw in the towel. And obviously, neither self-willed behavior or ideological behavior works in your favor because you miss out on so much. I believe the bigger issue is when we make a decision to, to throw in the towel and give up and not continue the pursuit or the progress that we've made so far. I think that sometimes we get so fixated on the way that we think that a particular situation or scenario should play out in an orderly fashion in our mind. But even the word of God tells us how God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. So it's unfortunate if we've allowed ourselves to get so deep into ideological behavior and then fold when things don't go in the direction that we had in mind, because it could very well work out in our favor if we just hold on and continue to watch God do his thing and work on our behalf. Also, I want to mention a hidden way ideology can appear, which is in the form of inherited behaviors. Because when God is taking you to greater heights and you're holding on to an inherited lifestyle only because that's all you've known, a lot of times he wants to reveal more of who he created you to be. So you may have to put away the idealistic lifestyle you have grown accustomed to all your life and see the image he created in you. Because... When God is moving you into new territory, some of those things that you used to do cannot be a part of you anymore because he's showing you a new you. And to sum this up, the four areas that I had mentioned, the self-willed behavior and complacency and conservativeness and ideology, all of these four areas have the same thing in common which is fear. You know, when you have developed self-willed behavior, you're operating out of fear. Fear you won't see the desired outcome you've hoped for. And then when you've become complacent, you're operating out of fear because you're afraid of being faced with disappointment. So it's safer to remain complacent and reserved. The same with a conservative mindset. It's an avoidance of disappointment. And when you have formed ideological circumstances to play out exactly the way you envisioned them, you're operating out of fear because you're not convinced you will receive the most out of what you've hoped for. So when we identify that it all connects to fear, then rather than addressing the problem areas one by one, you can go to the most effective route, which is to put your trust in Jesus and in him alone. When we do this, 
We're making room for God to reveal more of what he has for us. Then the fears of what's ahead begin to disappear. Now, the restructuring process is definitely hard because you've held on to these areas for so long. And then God will stretch us even further by requiring us to be genuinely kind and generous to those around us, all while we're adapting and learning to shed these parts along the way. But after it's all said and done, you'll notice how God strategically positioned you so that he could ignite the desire he knew resided in you, which was the desire to want more and reach greater heights. And then all while, he used that very thing to not only bless you with it, but also enhance your character while you are on the verge of gaining new territory. So this wraps up episode six. It is always a blessing to share these insights with you. So be sure to tune in to the next episode, episode seven. And I look forward to connecting with you then. Also, be sure to share the Faith-Based Workplace Show with others. Let them know that the podcast is available on all primary platforms. And finally, Don't forget to receive your blessing for the day and be a blessing to others.